Hey guys! So, have you ever thought about time travelling to the past? To save the future? Just because you wanted a different outcome? Well, what I want to talk to you guys about today is how our population is growing. <sighs> because there's so many humans in the world and our population is growing so much, we need to focus on what limited resources we have. Because we only have so many. <laughs> so, what we need to focus on is, for example, our communities and our cities. Because if we don't make them sustainable, uh, we're not going to last very long. We're going to run out of resources. And that won't be good, I imagine. <laughs> but, luckily for us, we're already in the past. We're already here. So, that's good, right? Because we can already change the future if we think that's going to happen. The question is how. How are we going to change that? Well, I've done some thinking and I think that one way we could change this and uh, create more of an equal society where because there's so many of us we can all, you know, live together and work it out and share what resources we have so that we can live as long as we can. Can you imagine yourself sitting in a lecture theatre with your book open, going through some notes, learning some stuff from someone talking to you, talking to the class, and learning information that way. That's what our current society is like. The idea that I have is a little bit different. Put all the knowledge that you learn from lectures and books into video games. Okay, so if we did all of our learning at universities and things through video games, what would this, what would this do? How would this help anyone? How would this help equality communities? The idea is, if everyone was to do their learning through video games, then I believe we would save a lot more time. Instead of doing units at university and courses and bachelors, what if you could, instead of waiting half a year to find out your results, all you had to do was complete a video game? Okay, so the first problem is, if everyone's learning was done through video games, some would argue that not everyone has access to, say, video games or technology. But, I would state that a lot of these people in the world also don't have t uh, access to stable incomes or, you know, money, um, some don't even have access to food in certain parts of the world. So it's, it's not really any different. Um, you're always giving privilege to one lot of people, you know, people with money. Um, or in this case, it would be people with technology. The only thing here is technology has become a lot more popular in recent years. In 2030, 96-99% of households are going to own a computer, according to these st stats. That's the maths. These are things that are going to be very practical in the future. There's going to be a lot of availability. Um, a lot of people are going to have access. That's, that's the bottom line. I mean, already in schools, it's mandatory for like, you know, young children to have iPads and laptops. Um, and they're already using technology by like age three, I, I guess, five. I don't have kids, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, they're, yeah, kids are already up there with technology. They're already implementing them in schools. We actually used to have a lot of video games in the past that would um, implement educational sort of learning. Uh, for example, some would be Peter Rabbit. Uh, it's fairly good for maths, for example. Uh, there was the Clue Finders, that was really big. Uh, although the graphics, of course, are a little bit old because these games are fairly old and they haven't really been implemented that much into society these days, uh, which I think is a shame. Uh, some other things include uh, Pokemon ROM games, Pokeroms. These were around for a while, so even the Pokemon company jumped into this. Uh, you'd have board games that you could play on the game, and what you'd do is you'd have a difficulty level depending on your age, and then it would ask you a mix of Pokemon related questions and educational related questions like here's one on the screen. You guys are probably like this. Um, it seems rather hard actually. Um, and through this game was what I learned 
was everything I learned about nouns and verbs and pronouns, which I never learned at school actually. Um, so I, I learned a lot of information that was really useful there. Uh, what would happen to teachers? What, what would they do? What, what, would a, what are universities going to do anymore? Well, the thing is, what if universities became video game manufacturing places? I know it also sounds crazy, but if they made video games, they could make profits off uh, servers being run. So you can make you know video games cooperative, so people could learn together. Um, you could also make some money off producing the video games and selling them out, <laughs> sending them out. Uh, teachers could be IRL t uh, tutors, so they could teach people in real life. Um, they could also go into the development of the video games, the story, all the things that they learnt on how to teach people best, um, like giving examples that are relatable. They can add all that sort of stuff into the video game and work on the projects themselves. And then whenever you know they, students need help, they made the video game. They put a lot of effort into you know being part of the team. They're going to be able to help them easily. And that that sounds like a huge paying job to me. Here's another statistic for you guys. So according to Pew Internet and American Life Survey, 81 percent of 18 to 29 year olds report playing video games. With such a huge amount of people already playing video games and the age of technology being on the rise, I think we've got what it takes to make successful video games that are educational based and we've already got like all the tools we need. We've got all these information and all these books. Um, this is just one book obviously, but if you get the information that you put in the lecture slides, uh, these sorts of books, and then add like a community for video games, of these uh, genres, you're going to be a success. It's going to be an amazing venture. So it would be more accessible, cost less, be more worldwide. Uh, you, you can make the education exchange more worldwide, and you'd spend less time in education. I think that's just a win-win-win all round. Um, it, it's something that's equal, it should be available to everyone. Um, anyone that can purchase a video game. You don't have to spend time doing video games, learning subjects that you don't need for whatever it is your future career aspects are. And you're less stressed. Who, who doesn't want less stress in their life, especially in this century, right? In this, in this time period, when Stress is on the rise from having so much money, having to get an education for so long. Um, then there's people that you know want children, and but they're in education and they want they want to have children before they're done with their education, before they get a job, before they get a house, before they get a car. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff to take in. So having an education where you can just you know play a video game and once you've completed the game, have the unit done. Have like, I don't know, basic maths done, That's, that just sounds great. You know, people working in their education in, at universities and stuff, they can, you know, release updates and DLC and everything else you'd need. You know, instead of having to buy a new textbook every year, you can just update the game. If video games were our education method, you'd find that people would get into jobs a lot earlier. That they'd feel possibly like them living more fulfilling lives by having less stress and less, less debt. And it incorporates something that people do on a day-to-day -day basis anyway in the century. They play video games, they have technology, they have computers. And it's something that we do to relax. And it can still be something we do to relax, we just learn at the same time. And that's just how it improves our equality in you know, our system sustainable cities and communities and etc. It just promotes a healthier way of living. And you don't need to game in the dark, you can share high scores with friends. And when they get some VR stuff out like Pokemon Go, oh, you'll see people, I mean you can just see people walking around, you know, what if there's an app? You just see them walking around with like apps on their phones, they can go outside to the park and they can study the same way you could with books. Basically whatever you could do with a book, you could do with an app on your phone now. That's why they have iBooks. iBooks? Oh no, the books you can read online. 
That's why they have ebooks. <laughs> and I think that this sort of uh, hierarchy of you know exporting video games as education at universities and stuff helps reduce like the uh, what do you call it the exploitation of students um, for the maximization of profits. So rather than saying, hey, you have to come to the education place, you have to pay lots of money, you have lots of debts, uh, you, you don't. <laughs> you have to just you play video games and they're enjoyable and they're fun. They get you involved, they get you active, you memorize facts just from playing. Like for example, if every time there was a loading screen in your game, uh, you could just, you had some text, You'd read it. You'd read it anyway, even though it's just a loading screen. It might be a psychological fact. You're gonna pick it up. You're gonna remember it. <laughs> it's not gonna just be like, oh, the X button is to jump. <laughs> yeah. It's a good direction to go in. It'll raise the quality. Communities, good. Skyrocket. Cities, skyrocket. Everything gets done faster. People spend less money. Um, to which we could be thinking of other ways to maximize sustainable cities and communities as well. So education is just one outlet that will help reduce a lot of stress. If you can think of some more, let me know down below. And if you like this education idea on video games, let me know as well because I'd be really interested to follow it up if there's a team involved, if they want to. Alright. Cheers guys. Thanks for watching this video.